And while certain people don't think it's real, we're pretty sure it is. And that is yeah, that the that's honey that comes true. out of a hive like this in the same bee yard as a Langstroth hive, uh, we were able to do a semi-scientific uh, experiment because we have a public apiary in Gilmer County and we have both kinds of hives operating. So five days apart, we extracted honey from uh, AC hives and from Langstroth hives in the same bee yard. It's way dry. That's not a fairy tale, that's real. That's under 16% and, and moisture. The Gilmer that's County bee yard. 17, we, 7, 17, 8. We experienced that a lot. It, we, have, um, we sell our honey at farmer's markets and we have little tasting bears with different pretzel into it. And you can pick up the bear with the pretzel. <laughs> the honey yeah. is so thick. You chew the honey. I mean, everybody yeah. knows what thick, real thick, dry honey yeah. tastes like, or not tastes like, feels like, the mouthfeel so that it has. A, that was part of the problem. Thing. It's not just the Gilmer County. That was part of the problem of blowing the foundation out was the honey was so thick that it you know it was not just coming out it was creating a certain amount of force i mean i spun that i had a little hand crank extractor and i spun that thing till my arm hurt and half the honey was still in there so now what i do i put a heater under my extractor i put a little hot plate under there and warm the extractor up and how come it makes it thicker there's two things the first and, and i First of all, I thought, well, okay, it has to be partly because of the consistent conditions and once they, they don't have to fight with the thermostat. You know, there's two people living in a house and one of them's hot, one of them's cold. They gotta keep adjusting the thermostat. They don't have to do that. Once they set their setup, once they get their air movement system set up, they can leave it alone. So it'll operate 24 seven pretty much the same way. That's a contributing factor. The second one is the design of the building itself. And I learned this on a video where Dr. Bozich was addressing a group up in New England and um, someone asked the question, why is the honey dry? And he explained, well, partly because of the design of the hive itself and the fact that they're in a building. The second thing is the building itself. Go to a picture of the building itself. Um, every bee house, and if you go, she can even go uh, do a, a Slovenian beekeeping search on Google and you'll click on the images and you'll see the variety of little garden sheds and bee houses and stuff that they use. The big overhang is the key, the big overhang on the front. That not only helps shade the bees in the summertime when the sun, the, the building faces south. So in the summer, the sun is behind the building basically and they're in the shade almost from the early morning hours until the late, and the sun never hits the fronts of the hives. Down low maybe. So it starts, warm air is rising across the fronts of those hives. The bees are pushing warm air out the front the sun, you know, is hit the bottom of the building, warm air starts to rise, hits the overhang and gets kicked out. Cool air is coming down off the outside of the roof. Now you create this, it's like having an attic fan in your house. You're constantly moving air. So the bees are pushing that hot, moist air out trying to dry the honey and it goes away. If your lang hive is sitting out in the yard, 95 degrees and 80% humidity and not a breath of air blowing, they can't push hard enough to get that hot air out of there. So that contributes to it. They're able to dry that honey out so much more efficiently that they just keep going. They don't cap it at 18, they cap it at 16. That's the explanation, best I can tell. So that's the little, you know, prize in the Cracker Jack box right there, you get thicker honey. 